Oh, thank you for bringing me this food, you guys. Um, she said she's full, but the food doesn't look like it's even been touched. <sighs> That's right. Based on what I've been able to observe, it doesn't seem like Claire V can interact with the physical world at all. Still, when she's presented with food, she'll always linger around it for a good little while. Maybe, in her mind, she really is eating those things. Does she know that she has already passed away? I've tried to ask her, but she didn't answer. My guess is that she's just as confused as we are. Or... Maybe she couldn't understand the question at all. Clairvy, if you've got some time, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Sure. Oh, another new friend. Hi, I'm Clairvy. Hello. Clairvy, how did you join the House of the Hearth? Huh? Isn't it the same for everybody? The knave brings you here, and then you can't leave. It's just that... your name... it's not on the roster. And I've never seen you before. The roster? Oh, I get it now. I think there might be some things you don't know about this place. The people in charge... they're not as nice as they look. They say they keep a roster, but it's not complete. There are a lot of people who aren't on it, and never will be. In this house, some people are family, and other people are just test subjects. Those kinds of people aren't ever going to get a place on the roster, unless it's the roster of people who've been executed. Wait, does, does that mean the name... She... Is there anyone that can vouch for you? Mm. Perry, she's my best friend. She's the only one I trust in this place. Have either of you heard of that name before? No. Me neither. Claire V. Perry. Neither of those names are on the roster. But... It seems like she's telling the truth. Either that, or this kid's already got a bag of tricks bigger than mine. Hmm. Maybe we should try a different approach. Claire V, do you have a wish? A wish? It can be anything you want. Just imagine. It's your birthday, you're blowing out the candles, and your wish is... To... to go outside, where the sun can find me. That's... it? Well, that sounds easy enough. The darkness in the house runs deeper than you can imagine. No one can get out alive. Okay, time to divide and conquer. Listen up, I've got a plan. I'll try and find a way to use basic illusory magic to take Claire V outside and bring her somewhere with sunlight. Lynette, try and find the list of executions that Claire V was talking about and see if her name is on it. Fremenet, you stay in Poisson. We can't be the only ones who've had run-ins with Claire V. I need you to collect intel on everything she's said and done. Understood. I'll try my best. What about us? What should we do? I really appreciate your willingness to help, but this is a family matter. I don't want to drag you in too deep. It's too risky. Let me think. Since Father considers you to be guests, maybe you could stick by her side for a little while. You don't need to do anything except keep up some nice, casual conversation. Paimon gets it. You want us to distract her. 
I'll give you a magic bird. If father suspects something, all you need to do is release it when she's not looking, and it'll alert me that something's wrong. Of course, that's only as a last resort. If father doesn't seem to notice us, there's no need to make contact. We'll reconvene here tonight after all's said and done. If the worst case scenario happens and we're discovered, just tell father everything. We're not going to let our guests get punished for our own actions. That's where we draw the line. You too. Okay, this is where we part. Father should be at the beach nearby. I really hope this goes well. No, it has to go well. That's the only way this can get resolved. It's you two. I didn't expect to run into you here. <laughs> I was unconscious for quite a while after the fight in the Primordial Sea. After I woke up, I realized I was being taken back to Snezhnaya. And well, I couldn't have that now, could I? Not when I've still got unfinished business here in Fontaine. So, I mustered up all my strength and made the journey back on my own. What sort of unfinished business are we talking here? It has to do with Skirk, my master. I really wanted to meet up with her, but by the time I got back, she had already left. I still have so many questions for her. Without any other leads, all I could do was ask the Knave to help me track her down. She must have left behind some traces from her time in Fontaine. Oh, okay, so have you found any clues? Unfortunately, no. While the House of the Hearth is adept at collecting all manner of intelligence, certain existences can still manage to escape our purview. Basically, unless Master feels there's a need to meet with me, she's not going to be found. But that problem has an easy fix. I just need to become stronger, and then... <coughs> uh, Paimon thinks you should focus on getting better first. <laughs> the worst of it is over. It's all thanks to that one kid from the House of the Hearth. Elwar, I think her name was. She gave me a bunch of random potions to drink. They didn't go down easy, let me tell you. Pain and chills all over. But they really did help speed up my recovery. And that's good, because it looks like I really do have to head back this time. The old man's been putting the pressure on me. He sent someone to tell me I'm needed for some sort of project. Project Stuja? Yeah, that's the one. <sighs> I heard Regrater's involved, too. I'm not looking forward to having to listen to all his monologuing, that's for sure. Hey, maybe you could think of a way for me to stay in Fontaine for a little longer. Helping Linny and the others brush up on their fighting skills would be far more interesting. If you and I could spar, that would be even better. I've been waiting for a chance to see you go all out. And what a sweet little daydream that is. But I also have a role to play in all this. I'll be leaving Fontaine shortly as well. Besides, considering how little they see fit to step outside the homeland, being called on to return to Snezhnaya by such illustrious dignitaries... What a great honor. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> One I could do without, I'd say. Uh, is it just Paimon? Or does it kind of seem like they're... So, dear guests of the House of the Hearth, to what do I owe the visit? Um, well, we just... Um, right! 
We're super close to Linny and the others, but we still don't know much about you. Is that so? Introductions have already been made, have they not? Oh, uh, well, you see? There's only so much you can learn about someone from a short introduction. At least tell us something a little extra, like... Why do you call yourself father? Huh, good question. I'd also like to know. The fact that you have to ask tells me our intelligence work has been quite successful. Telling you the answer to that question would only serve to undermine that success. And we can't have that, now can we? Spoken like a true diplomat. That was some expert sidestepping right there. Well, if there's nothing else, I think I'll take my leave. I still have a small matter to resolve at home. Uh, uh wait, do go! <laughs> I'd also like to hear the answer to this. I've met some of the members of your organization, and they all seemed like really good kids. They actually reminded me of Tonya and Tusser. Which, by the way, if you ever betray them, I'm just letting you know, I won't let you off easy. And why would I betray them? Well, you've already betrayed the House of the Hearth once, haven't you? At least, that's what I heard. Hmm. Okay, okay, I admit. That's just what the old man told me. The rooster, I mean. Wait, did you really do something bad to those kids? Never mind what I've done. I'm more curious as to what the mighty rooster had to say. Care to enlighten me? Ah, well, nothing much. Just some stuff about you taking out many other members of the House of the Hearth, and even going so far to attack your own family. Hmm. I see. Oh, based on your reaction, I'm guessing it's all a bunch of lies. Hardly. I don't appreciate his particular turns of phrase, but I suppose he didn't say anything untrue. Although, it would be more accurate to say that there is a certain level of prejudice involved. But, I don't intend to clear that up just yet. Prejudice has a funny way of concealing the real truth behind certain things. An attribute that I find to be quite advantageous. Call yourself a Fontanian, for example, and people will assume all sorts of things. When the real truth is that this is simply the land where I was raised. Huh? You're not actually from Fontaine? But then why did you try to help out with the prophecy and everything? I was trying to protect the children born in Fontaine. Claiming that I myself was a Fontanian simply made it easier to operate. People would hardly suspect a fellow Fontanian of having any ulterior motives. Who wouldn't want to save their homeland after all? The Primordial Sea wouldn't have any effect on me, but it would have caused great harm to the House of the Hearth. Well, you wanted extra information, didn't you? There you go. I hope that satisfied your curiosity. So, you stayed in Fontaine for the kids. I guess I was wrong to believe you'd betray them. Apologies. Looks like I was holding on to some prejudices myself. Good. Like I said, I like it when others have misconceptions of me. Actually, while I was recuperating at the House of the Hearth, there was something else that really caught my attention. I heard that members always resolve disputes and arguments with a friendly spar, and the loser has to back down. Seems pretty cool if you ask me. Would also give them plenty of opportunities to hone their skills. Well, that's only a recent development. In the past, such spars weren't nearly so... friendly. The losing party would lose everything, including their life. They were that high stakes? Whew, at least that's not a thing anymore. Well, the current atmosphere is not half bad. I'm a bit jealous, actually. You've got so many family members around you, and you even get to live with them. 
Having a lot of family around means dealing with a considerable amount of bickering and scheming. Once Tonya and Tusser enter their rebellious phase, I'm sure you'll understand. Just imagine. Tusser becomes obsessed with plucking out strands from the rooster's mustache, or Tonya decides to dye her hair 42 different colors. Okay, okay. I get the picture. Uh, well, would you look at the time? I should probably get going. Traveler, Paimon, I'm not sure where our paths will cross next, but the next time we run into each other, we should definitely try and find some time to spar. <coughs> um, again, maybe this is a conversation we can have when you look less like you're gonna keel over. All right, all right. Well, thanks for everything, Arlecchino. No thanks necessary. You also played a part in obtaining the Gnosis. I would say we can call ourselves even. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, I'm off. See you all some other time. Um, we should probably get going too. Do you want to head back with us? Oh? You want me to leave so soon? Oh! I... Well, you see... Um... I'm rather enjoying the evening breeze. If you don't mind, I think I'll stick around for a bit. I have some things to think about. Apologies for not attending to you like a proper host. Please, forgive this slight. I do hope you'll have a pleasant stay. <sighs> we managed to keep her distracted until nightfall. Good thing Child was there to keep the conversation going. You don't think she suspected anything, do you? Oh, I wonder if Liddy ran into any issues. Let's hurry back and see how everything went. story short, we ran into a small issue. Clairvy can't go into the sunlight. Everything was fine at first. She followed me up to the surface just like I told her. But as I led her out of the shadows and into the sunlight, she vanished. I turned around, and there she was, standing at the edge of the shadows, silently watching me. Huh. Maybe she's afraid of sunlight, or... No, it wouldn't be her wish if that were the case. Hmm. Well, we could always try pushing her into it. Oh, true. I've pretty much tried it all already. Nothing worked. Eventually, the sun went down, so all I could do was bring her back here. <sighs> How did it go with you, Lynette? Good. I've got the list. It's right here. Really? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's take a look! Oh, that's a lot of pages. Oh, it's gonna take forever to get through it all. We can each take a section. Here. La Pouillade, Landois, Jambel, Orer. Oh, yikes. That Orer guy has a huge scar on his face. He's kind of giving Pime on the creeps. Ah, I've met him before. The scar is from an injury he received during a mission. <laughs> I still remember him joking with me about it. He said any future lover would take one look at him and then lose all interest. 
Did he say anything else? Well, I asked if there was someone he was interested in. He said no, and that's where our conversation ended. It was only later that I learned he really did have someone he liked. He risked everything to escape so he could be with her, but... It didn't work. One day, father asked to see him, and... well... I never saw him again after that. Wait, so that means... the knave, she... It may seem cruel, but it's just one of the rules of the house. Betrayal is not to be taken lightly. We know too many secrets to come and go as we please. So, if you do try to leave, you pay with your life. Her name's not here, huh? Well, that's not too surprising. It doesn't seem like this list is complete. It only contains records dating back around five years. Let's shift our attention then. Fremene, were you able to find anything out? <sighs> Fremene? Uh, uh, sorry, I was thinking about something. I managed to talk to quite a few people, but I couldn't help but notice that the atmosphere in the house was a little... Strange. Strange? Yeah, I mean, I know there have been arguments in the past, times when people haven't gotten along. Chaplo and Filial are a good example of that. Oh, those are two of the people that we met while delivering supplies. Paimon can see how they might not get along. They had very different vibes, and their, um, interests seem to be pretty different as well. That's to be expected, actually. Father brought us all here, shared her knowledge with us, taught us how to fight. That's one thing we all share. But that's also where the similarities end. Not all of us feel the same desire to stay here. As members of the House of the Hearth, we're also considered part of the Fatui. And to a lot of people, that's an identity they never asked for. Certain members get older and realize they want something else for themselves. But considering the rules of the house, most people would never say that out loud. People like Chaplo and Foltz are loyal to Father and her vision. They're proud to be part of the Fatui. Filial and Nantoy, on the other hand, well, they aren't quite as enthusiastic. These kinds of conflicts have always been there. It's not like Father is in the dark about any of this. Well, that's true. But it just feels like things have gotten worse lately. Filial and the others... It seemed like they were meeting in secret to talk about something. I can't say for sure, but I think they've met Clairvy. You think she's been inciting them to act out? No, not exactly. But I wouldn't be surprised if she said something to them about the darkness in the house and how deep it runs. She's told me about it before. Experiments being run on children. People being used as pawns on the battlefield without so much as the strength to survive. And they just believed all that? Without any evidence? Clarivy's words probably gave them the excuse they were looking for. Whether they actually believe them to be true is secondary. <sighs> this is all because of Project Stuja, isn't it? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. What's this Project Stuja all about, huh? This is the second time it's come up now. Sorry, but I'm not sure of the details either. I only know what Father has told us, which is that it's something the Rooster and Regrader have been working on together. Apparently, it has to do with the Fatui's strategic plan for the future. Because the House of the Hearth was so successful in obtaining the Gnosis, we now have the honor of playing a key role in Project Stuja. Wait, but isn't that a good thing? Key role is just another way of saying dangerous role. To us, the whole thing is an inconvenience. Father thinks so too, but she's in no position to refuse. 
Their plan isn't exactly unreasonable, and they've been funneling the house a lot of funding. It's just that... We'll lose a lot of members in the process. Participating in the plan... It's an honor in name only. What they're really trying to do is subdue us. The existence of an intelligence organization outside their control makes them feel uneasy. Okay, super complicated top secret Fatui business aside, what does all of this have to do with the conflicts you were talking about earlier? Paimon doesn't get the connection. External pressure has a way of exacerbating internal strife. You can't overlook the power of fear, either. People are afraid of dying. And that fear is often the impetus for a lot of stupid decisions. I thought resolving the Clairvy situation would make everything go back to normal. But it looks like things are more complicated than I thought. If we leave Filial and the others to their own devices, sooner or later, Father will be forced to take action. We can only focus on one situation at a time, brother. You're right. Even if we confront Filial and the others, it won't do any good. It might even make matters worse. We should focus on Clairvy for now. Well, it's getting late. We should head back and get some rest. We'll try again first thing tomorrow. Lynette, you stick with me this time. Fremine, keep a close eye on Filial and the others. Make sure they don't do anything they'll regret. Good work today, everyone. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. to an early night, but she can't sleep at all. Uh, hey, you don't think the Knave will be too angry with Linny and everyone if she finds out about all this, do you? She's even scary when she smiles. If she were to actually get angry... Ooh, you have to protect Paimon if that happens, okay, Traveler? In that case, we should just plan on running away. We'll grab Linny and the others, and we can make a break for it as fast as we can. <gasps> Look! Look over there! Quick! Let's catch up with her before anyone sees! while no one was looking. Look how pretty the outside is. If only I could have more than this. You probably think I'm being silly, huh? All this hopeless resisting? It's better to dream of what I could have than try to make it a reality, right? Please, help us get on the same page here, Clary. We need you to tell us what you know. Can you do that? Sure. Although, 
After you hear all this, I think you might regret that decision. Everyone in this family is nothing more than a tool. Something to be used and exploited. We're all expendable. Including me. As long as you're useful, you get to stick around. Lose your value. You're handed over to the doctor. Experimented on. And given a fate worse than death. I've seen it happen again and again. And I've had enough. You're saying the knave did all that? It's just, that doesn't seem like something she would do. Uh, she's scary and all, but it seems like even she has lines she wouldn't cross. Hmm. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Everyone thinks she's a good person. They all think of her like a real mother. Mother? But she doesn't deserve that title. She's disgraced it and tarnished it. And if I had things my way, I'd never see her again. If only Perry were here, she'd understand. Perry? There's that name again. Also, Paimon's getting a strange feeling. It almost feels like she's not really here with us. Paimon can't tell if she's actually talking to us, or if she's mistaken us for someone else. Hmm... Well, in any case, it seems like she really needs someone to talk to. We should keep her company for a little longer. She looks so young. But it seems like she's been through a lot. <sighs> it's getting windy. I should close the window. Ooh, look at the moon! Isn't it pretty? Hey, wanna hear a secret? I heard that if you look up at the night sky in Shnezhnaya, you can see the aurora. It's supposed to be super pretty. Even prettier than the moon tonight. Perry and I promised each other that once we're older, we're gonna go see it together. But I can't find her. I'm worried she's all soupin. No, that wouldn't happen to her. She's special. Mother likes her a lot. We should really go talk to Mother, but we just fought. She doesn't want to see me, and I'm too scared to face her. What should I do? really doesn't understand what's going on with her. Well, let's head back. We've got an early morning tomorrow. Apologies 